What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking and grading. Talking and grading? What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be grading every single free agent move that the Lions made this offseason, at least up till this point. Obviously, free agency is still going on. Lions, from what I could tell mathematically, had around $26 million in cap space to spend, so they may make another small move, but usually Bob Quinn likes to save some of this money for draft picks and future trades, or if they have to bring someone in, Bob Quinn likes to have some money in the bank, which is smart. I mean, it's smart not to be broke, and then every time something comes up, you have to move someone to sign someone else. Like, that'd be a mess. It's good to have some money. So they may not even make another move. They may make one more. I'm not exactly sure but with everything kind of slowing down I thought this would be a good time to do some grades on at least so far what they have done this offseason both signings and in trades now the Lions went about this at a completely different approach um, and when I thought about it more I think they did it a very smart way so the Lions came in with just about 50 million dollars in cap space to spend um, I got up to like 54 I think with like the releasing of Snacks Harrison and Rick Wagner so they did have some money but again they weren't at the very top I mean I think some people think that we had the most money for agency to spend we had good money but we weren't like one of the highest teams to spend I mean some teams had just banked to spend in free agency. I mean, the Dolphins were just overpaying everybody just to fill out every roster spot. Some teams just had so much more money than us. We had good money, don't get me wrong, but we didn't have the most money in free agency. So we had to make sure we were still, you know, kind of smart with our money. Tons of holes to fill. They had the tackle position. They had the guard position. I bring back Glasgow because they wanted to save some more money to make other moves, which looking back on it, I can kind of understand. He did get 44 mil, which I said I would have offered him, but hey, they didn't go that route. That's okay. So they passed on that. They needed the defensive tackle because they lost snacks here. So they needed multiple ones, actually. Uh, they could use some cornerback. They needed a safety veteran. They needed some linebackers. They needed basically every position you can imagine. They needed a backup quarterback. They kind of, you know, they didn't really need a wide receiver, so I guess they basically just passed on that. They just needed a lot of help, okay? And we know they signed Amendola back. And the Detroit Lions went about this a different way than I think many people thought, especially me. And I was like, okay, looking back on this, this is actually a smart way that they handled this. So there was two ways the Lions could handle this. They could either go out, which was our biggest positional need at defense tackle, and spend tons of money. And one guy everybody was looking at was DJ Reader, Javon Hargrave. Those two guys were at the very top and they were going to get a lot of money, okay? They were going to get like $15, $16 million a year, and the Lions could do that. They could just get the best position. They could be the best player pretty much at that position and then just kind of like fill in with some okay players everywhere else. They could go get the best tackle in Jack Conklin. Um, we could we could have spent a lot more money. The Lions obviously did play a little bit safer, but they got multiple players at multiple positions, and they got a lot of budget players, and I think they did it in a very, very smart way. Now, some players, you can make the case they overpaid for, but I think they did this in a very smart way. As we go through the grades, you will see what I'm talking about. Also, the Matt Patricia Slay stuff, not even gonna make a video on that. It's just talk. I mean, I don't know what's what. I don't wanna make a video on it. I, there's just, there's no point of it. Slay didn't wanna be here. Uh, Patricia is still our coach. I don't know what else to say. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we win some games in 2020. Anyways, let's talk about some of these grades. Let's start off with Big V, otherwise known as Halapula Velati Batai. I tried my best, okay? I, I did my best there. The offensive tackle from the Philadelphia Eagles that we signed this offseason, obviously. I'm not going to say that for everyone. I don't know why I said it now. I'm not going to say it for everyone. My apologies. He's 6'6", six six, 320 pounds. Again, I have a way bigger breakdown on this. Um, but this is a very big need. Obviously, after releasing Rick Wagner, you need to find a way to get a tackle. Now, the thing about him that's great is he can play both left tackle and right tackle, and he could potentially play the right guard he didn't do it as often but he did play guard when he had to and he can do that so if the Lions want to try to move him in that role they could they do need a right guard they could go there or you know they'll put him on a tackle which I think would be the right tackle left tackle is pretty much good with Taylor Decker I'm assuming it's going to be the right tackle um I think the Lions are prioritizing tackles just by the fact that they brought in a guy for five years 50 million in Big V who was uh limited in playing time instead of bringing back Graham Glasgow because I think they're prioritizing tackle over guard I've talked about it before because that's where a lot of the pressure comes from so I think that's what the Lions are looking at here and I think he's going to be our right tackle because he's kind of like an instant replacement it was the first move they actually made so they replaced the tackle just like that with a young player in Big V after back in 2016 um, and he's like I said a very young player but he doesn't have a lot of playing time right he was behind two of the better tackles in the league however those tackles were a little bit older and they did have injuries come up and he would have to step in and when he did step in he looked very very good now Big V is not an overall great tackle I think he got a lot better as his, as the years went on but he was a run tackle, right? This guy was drafted, I think, in the fifth round. So it's like you bring this guy in to be a back backup. You don't expect your fifth round usually to be a starting tackle in the league. He is going to be now, at least for the Detroit Lions, we assume. Um, and yeah, he was a fifth round pick. So they got him for probably one thing. They probably looked at him and coming out of the draft and said, okay, he's really good at this. We can work with that. He can be our backup to some of these other good tackles that we have in case they go down. And that's what he worked for. And that's what he did very, very well. He's a good backup tackle. 2016, excuse me, his first year, he played in 37% of the snaps. 2017, 73% of 
the snap split a lot in 2017 because of injuries. 2018, 31%, and 2019, 41%. So it's actually not that little. Like, it's not like he didn't play at all. He did play, okay? He almost played, like, half the snaps. But at the same time, he didn't play a ton. Like, he didn't get starter time. So he's just behind that. So so people that say, oh, he's a backup. Well, he is a backup because he's behind two of the best tackles. And he also did play a lot of time, like, almost half of the snaps. So you could kind of make a case that he's not really a backup. He's like the closest thing to not being a backup a backup is. Does that make any sense? I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But again, up to 2019, he wasn't the best tackle or a very good tackle. A very good run tackle. Okay, he could block in the run very, very well. And I think that's why they brought him in in the fifth round because he was good at one thing. You try to find one thing that you can build off of. And that's what they could build on. Ability to run block. And up to this day, he's still one of the best run tackles I think I've seen. He can run block like crazy. He can go up the field. He just, he's really good at one round blo run blocking. If you watch the film, if you guys want to watch that break, down go check it out very good at run blocking pass blocking was definitely like this however last season it actually got a lot better and uh as a whole he was graded a 72.8 pro focus he actually graded out higher than rick wagner in run blocking and pass blocking and as a whole obviously because he was better at both he allowed two sacks last season um looking at the penalties he allowed four penalties last he allowed four he had four penalties um compare this to rick wagner who allowed three sacks so again rick wagner only allowed one more sack but grading out higher in run blocking and pass blocking which is surprising in pass blocking but yes it's a little bit higher but run blocking for sure very good run blocking tackle and the Lions have always wanted to be an offensive line that could run I mean Bob Quinn came in he said he wanted to fix this offensive line he wanted a team that could run the football and uh, we really haven't had that yet again he brings in a guy here that should definitely help and that's I don't know this is definitely a high risk high reward signing I think the Lions got a high risk here because he wasn't a, a starter right he never really had starter time he did come in but he did play a lot of snaps but the high reward is that he was drafted in 2016 he's very very young and to get him on a five-year 50 million which sounds crazy but it's only 10 mil a year I mean you sign guys like this all the time but I'm gonna give this a B minus, possibly a B. I do think it fills out the biggest need. I think there is some risk here because he is young, you know, and he wasn't the best pass blocker. And I think it is all about protecting Stafford. So this is actually the lowest grade you're probably going to see today at B minus. And I'm going to be as honest as I can. I'm going to give him a B minus, but I do think that this guy has that high, high reward possibility where this is an A plus. This is a, a ball. I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Okay. This this is a home run hit. This could be a home run hitter because you have him for five years. That if he comes in, he plays well, you got this guy locked up for a long time. And that's a great thing to have. But there also is that kind of a risk that he hasn't been a starter. And uh, yeah, he's going to get a B minus. So let's move on to the next move the Lions made. And that's Jamie Collins. I'm going to go a little bit faster than I did on Big V. Had a lot to talk about there because it was our first move. But Big V um, was a, you know, interesting signing. Now we got Jamie Collins in the building. So Jamie Collins, who was signed from the New England Patriots, who I actually gave a high grade to. And Jamie Collins was a very big signing for the Detroit Lions, but he wasn't a high risk, high reward like Big V. Jamie Collins was a guy that you know you're going to get and you brought him in. This is a veteran player. He's 30 years old. He's going to add a lot of veteran leadership to the linebacker group that's very young, which Lonnie Tavai, Jared Davis, you know, a lot of the young guys that you got there, possibly another draft pick. You got a lot of young guys at that linebacker position. We moved on from, from Devon Kennard. Some people want to say it's his replacement. I don't think it is. I don't think they play the same position. I actually think Austin Bryant's more of a replacement. So again, leadership there. So I think Austin Bryant plays more of that position. He plays more on the inside and I think he'll do better there but again he, he was in a system with the Patriots and some people get mad about all the Patriots bringing in I think it's smart why would you not bring in players that fit your scheme automatically and you know what if that's how the Lions want to do it do it your way you know what you're gonna, you're gonna get fired if you don't have a good season am I right I mean you can't be awful again so you got to figure out something bring in the guys you're comfortable with and you can believe you can win with now and that's smart this is a this is a now move the Lions are bringing in a guy in Jimmy Collins who is going to help you right now Big V you know there's a little bit of risk there not, not Jamie Collins. The only risk is that he's 30 years old. He's going to be 33 by the time he's off his contract because you signed him to a three or 30 million. But for this year, I mean, just this year alone, he's going to come in. He's going to make plays. He's going to fit the scheme right away. He's going to just, he's just going to hit the ground running. He's going to be like he's on another Patriots team, just a little bit worse, right? I don't know. <laughs> a little bit worse from last season. Maybe our defense is really good this season. I definitely hope so. But Jamie Collins is a guy that's going to be coming in. He's going to be great with the Patriots. 2014, he had four sacks, two interceptions. 2015, five sacks, five and a half sacks, one interception. And then in 2019, back with the Patriots from Cleveland, where it just didn't work out. He actually came up with seven sacks and three interceptions. I get a lot of those were off the tip balls, but still being in the right place, right time is a very important skill to have and uh, he was he was just a good player a solid player is going to come in he's going to do really well now maybe when he's 33 he's not the same player that's the only risk I see unless the Lions move him before that so I give him an A minus because of the age but at the same time I think this is a great sign the Lions need to do it Lions needed a guy like this yeah it's not great to bring in young dudes but you got to bring in some guys that know how to win and a guy like Jamie Collins can do that next up let's get into Nick Williams the defensive lineman the surprise defensive lineman the Lions signed at like one in the morning out of Chicago Nick Williams is a very very interesting player you want to talk about high risk 
but not high re like i would say no no i would say high reward less risk there isn't tons of risk here because this was a cheaper contract you got him on a two-year 10 million dollar deal that's five million a year that's not that bad it's really not that bad five million a year it's a lot but it's not terrible and again this was the lion's biggest position of need now we signed nick williams i knew this wasn't the replacement because nick williams is good uh, at least last season he was nick williams was one of those guys that never got playing time he barely could find his way into the nfl was out of the nfl at one point and it was like wow is this guy ever going to get an opportunity to do anything 2019 though he does get that opportunity at 29 years old he does his thing and nick williams comes up with six sacks for the chicago bears and he was huge and everybody's like oh snap this guy actually did something and it's like okay this is a good player once he finally got his opportunity so i guess based on what we know when he did snaps he gets sacks i mean that works out perfectly for me and you're getting a very very cheap contract now he is not the youngest player so maybe his ceiling isn't as high that could have been his ceiling but if you get six sacks from the defense tackle position for the lions we will love you here because we don't have a guy that can do that from the defensive tackle position this is one of those signings again high reward i think it's lower risk but it's not the re i don't think it's the replacement for snacks right because yeah I don't, you know i don't think the lions thought it was either but he does have the potential to be really good because we've seen it and it was last year, so I guess, you know, maybe he does have that great potential. There's a great story behind him. I do like the signing. I think this was a nice signing. I'm going to give it a B plus because, you know, it was cheap and stuff. But up to the, up to 2019, the risk is he hasn't he didn't do anything. He never even got really playing time. Um, maybe there's a reason for that. But when you look at the stats, when he did get playing time, he had six sacks. Yes, probably some pressure was taken off from him. But a defense tackle getting six sacks is not normal. If this guy did that consistently, he would have been one of the highest paid defensive tackles probably in the league. So, yeah. I think this is a really nice move. Next up, we have Chase Daniels. He gets a B plus. Next up, we get Chase Daniel. I don't even say what Daniels. Like, there's no S at the end. I don't think there's any S. But he is a backup quarterback now for Matthew Stafford. And this is definitely one of those signings that everybody was mad about. I think this was the signing that that just kind of like tip people over the edge because our move so far is a, a backup tackle, an old guy in Jamie Collins. We got Nick Williams who like had one good year. And then we bring in this dude, Chase Daniel for three years, 13 million. And people are like, are you serious, Bob Quinn? Like, what are you doing? People are freaking out. I, get, I think a lot of people did like the Jamie Collins signing, but this one is like, why are we spending this much on a backup quarterback? However, I think the backup quarterback signing was probably the smartest signing they actually made this off season. And you may think that's crazy. I think this is the smartest signing they made. Maybe not the best one, but the smartest. Lions bringing in a backup quarterback here and has proven he can win games when he has to step in why is he proving that because he beat us on he beat the lions on thanksgiving but not only that i mean this is a player that has multiple good traits he is 33 years old going to be 34 in october um he's a guy that's definitely good and he can help out whoever the developmental quarterback is he's gonna know how to play initially so it's not a guy that you have to like work with he's gonna fit right in he's got some mobility which is good um he has, even at his age he's got some mobility which is a little bit different from what stafford has so if the line is struggling then that'll definitely help he also does have a nice touch pass i saw that he's a beautiful touch pass now now, close spaces, not very good. I did a breakdown. I don't know if you guys want me to talk more about it. But Chase Daniel, simply a 33, set to be 34-year-old uh, back of quarterback is a must-need. The Lions could potentially, I mean, Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn could potentially save their job with this signing. If Matthew Stafford goes down near the end of the year and they need one, more, they need like one or two more wins, Chase Daniel, if you were playing well, good, if you're playing good enough around him, he will find a way to get you a win. He can get you a win. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm not blaming all on our backup quarterbacks. But we were 0-8 without Stafford. So I think this was a position they must address. And some people say, well, now you can't get a developmental quarterback. Absolutely, you can. The Lions will hold three. The third string quarterback will be the developmental. Will it be Blau? I don't know. It won't be Driscoll because he's with uh, Denver. Will be a rookie quarterback that we just draft. I don't know. But either way, we got a nice, solid veteran. And I think this is the smartest move. The Lions had to have someone behind Stafford that they could rely on if anything bad happened. And they got it in Chase Daniel for three years. And again, it's only four. It's only just over $4 million a year. I mean, yeah, that's not that crazy to, considering uh, it's probably the cheapest deal that we have signed up. It was cheaper than Nick Williams. So, I mean, come on, man. It's not that bad. Now, I do have this on two separate papers. That's why I'm doing this. Let's try to fly through this because I feel like we're taking forever. Next up, we got Duran Harmon, the safety from the Patriots. And this was a trade. This was not a signing. We actually traded away our seventh, our fifth round pick that we got from Seattle. We had two fifth round picks. We traded one away to New England Patriots. And what did we get in return? Well, in return, we actually got a seventh round pick in Duran Harmon. Now, Duran Harmon was, again, a backup safety for most of his time. He had very good safeties. And he didn't have a lot of playing time or a lot of snaps at the safety position but when he did he grayed out very very well he was actually allowed only 61.1 percent completion percentage to 18 in 2019 at 53 percent completion percentage and uh in 2018 only a 39 pass rating 2018 a 77.8 pass rating so very good when he did get the opportunity again this is a veteran player the lines were looking for a veteran safety to pair with some of these young guys that we have i mean think about some of the young guys that we have on our team tracy walker will harris these guys 
are they're very young now Jaron Curse. these guys are very young and they they, they were just kind of trying to work their way i think tracy walker is going to go this guy could potentially start in front of will harris but he's going to give you a veteran that is known as the closer because he would close games 17 career interceptions knows the way to end the game he can just find a way to end the game and he's very clutch lines needed that in the back end and they got it here you know glover quinn was kind of that guy i'm not comparing this guy to glover quinn in any way but i am saying this is a nice signing for a veteran and the lions did this via a trade and they really just swapped late round picks i mean to give up one year fifth was like nothing i mean you got a nice safety for one year fifth round picks great move I give the lions an a on this one next up let's go to uh danny shelton now danny shelton i'm trying to go a little bit faster because i feel like we're taking a long time danny shelton the defensive lineman for the new england patriots here that we brought in again another new england patriots this is the third one we've seen some people are like ah, i'm tired of it already again i kind of already explained how i feel about that but this is a very good signing for the contract that we were able to put this on okay this is a 26 year old who was known as one of the top interior defensive linemen danny shelton was known as one of the top interior defensive linemen when i saw that we signed in danny shelton i was like oh that's probably some good money there two years eight million like what yes i would have loved to lock him up actually even longer because you're only spending that much but eight million dollars so four million a year you're telling me you got danny shelton at 26 in the prime of his career are you serious yeah that's what we did perfect scheme fit he's gonna come in day one he's gonna be good to go because he was with new england he's gonna know what to do in detroit so he's great there he's a run stuffer which we needed we already have nick williams so we'll pair him with nick williams he had 61 tackles last season probably coming off his best year with three sacks as well i mean this first Two years, eight million. This is a beautiful signing for a 26 year old who's, like I said, still in his prime. One forced fumble. I don't understand how the Lions got him this cheap. I still don't understand how they got him this cheap. He grayed out as a 71.6. I don't know. The Lions pulled it off, and I think this is their best signing that they needed. This was the biggest need, and like I said, the Lions went about this a different way. This is their biggest need defense tackle, and they 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 pretty much, I wouldn't say they solidified it. They could use some more help, but they pretty much filled it out mostly on a very cheap contract with Nick Williams and Danny Shelton. I don't know how they got Danny Shelton. I think this was the robbery of the year and a sleeper robbery because not a lot of people are talking about it. I'm giving this grade an A+. Bob Quinn, this was beautiful. This is beautiful. Good job, Bob Quinn. Next up, Desmond Trufant. Now, this one is kind of a simple signing. We signed this right before we trade Darius Slay. So looking back on it, it's kind of obvious why they signed him. And I should have been more aware of that um, before I got all hype about it. But yes, they signed Desmond Trufant, the 29-year-old cornerback from the Atlanta Falcons, to a two-year $21 million deal, which in, you know, when we look back at it, it's simply the replacement for Darius Slay. He's not as good as Darius Slay, but he is a playmaker. He did come up with four interceptions last year. Last season, didn't actually grade out, I don't think, as well in 2018. Because in 2018, he was better when it came to pass rating a lot and completion percentage allowed and uh, missed tackle percentage he was better in 2018 however in 2019 when he was a little bit worse and the only really concern with him is that shoulder injury if it wasn't for the shoulder injury he may not even be a free agent that we could have brought in because he is a very big playmaker and still in only nine games he came up with four interceptions i mean i don't know what you could ask for from a cornerback but four interceptions in nine games and it wasn't even his best year is very good and uh let's just keep it simple this is a solid replacement i don't think he's as good as darius slay they are the same age we locked him up for two years so it's not like, you know, we're going to have one of this huge deal, super expensive. This was another good signing. I mean, the Lions are not breaking the bank anywhere here. They're, they're making nice moves like 10 mil, 10 mil, but they're, they're working out and they're filling out big needs. And they, I don't think they replaced Slay, but they got a lot of big help here. And I don't think you need Darius Slay on this team. I don't think you need a Darius Slay caliber player. I don't think you have to exactly replace him with someone as good or better because it's going to be hard to do that, number one. And two, if you get more pass rush, you're going to look better anyways. So this was a good move. Now we just got to get some pass rushers. I'm giving this one an A minus. And now let's finish this thing off with J. Ron Curse to safety that we signed a six foot four safety who some people remind him of isaiah simmons look this one is weird he's not isaiah simmons i would way rather has isaiah simmons but my curse is a uh, special team stud that's what he is he's uh i still can't go over the fact that he's a safety and he's six foot four but anyways one year 2.75 million he's gonna come in and be a special teams player so it's a cheap deal special team stud Matt Patricia loves the special team guys. Not going to waste a lot of time here. He can add you just at safety. I'm going to give it an A minus. I can't really give it a lower grade. It is a cheap contract. And the Minnesota said we got a steal. So, all right, cool. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's all the free agent moves that we made. Now, the Darius Slay trade was one. I'll talk about it. I don't really have a grade for it. Uh, we traded away Darius Slay. We know how disgusting that relationship was. I'm not, I'm not getting into it. I don't want to get into it. It's not. I don't really... It is what it is, right? They didn't like each other. Okay, boom, he's out of here. You can't keep a guy around that doesn't like you and that you don't like them. That just ain't going to work out. And I'm not saying that, oh, good job, Matt Patricia, or oh, good job, Darius Slate. Like, I don't know. All I know is we got to win some dang games or you're going to be fired anyway. So it doesn't really matter. You can move on from Darius Slate. I want, but you're going to get fired if you don't play well, you know? But at the same time, Matt Patricia can't win games if he's got players in here that just hate him. So I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. But Detroit Lions were able to acquire a third and fifth. Obviously, I would have loved more. But the thing that, like I was going to say, I loved the most about this free agency is how many picks we have in the draft. I mean, think about this. We filled out most of our needs. Guard is 
you know, could use a need. But other than that, we're going talent positions. We're getting edge rushers. We got to get edge rushers. We got to, we could go get another running back. We just got to fill out some talent playmakers here. And we have multiple picks to do it. We have a first round pick, a second round pick, two third round picks, a fourth round pick, two fifth round picks, a sixth round pick, and now a seventh round pick to get a backup quarterback. This is beautiful. This is a Lions are in a position and they needed to do it. They needed to find a way to have a great offseason. And I think they did it. You know, I think in a quiet way, the Lions did it. And uh, I like the offseason as a whole. Free agency, I'm going to give an A minus to. I think this was a very good sleeper free agency. Not a big splash here or there, but I don't think they need that. That's what they're going to use on the draft, I believe. They may make another signing, they may not, but I think the free agency, I think the draft is really going to really say, okay, let's go get our playmakers. And they have the ability to do that. And I also see a big guard coming in. They have to go with the guard. You got to fill out that guard spot. Anyways, let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'm out.